Welcome to the Flat Sum e-commerce WordPress theme tutorial, where in this session we're going to talk all about page types and how it all relates to titles and how it breaks things for you. But if you're lucky, it'll make things work really well for you. So let's jump straight in by first going over what the page types are, what they're for, and how you can use them. And then we'll jump into examples. If you've been following along on the series, you know that this is a home page, this is a cart page, this is a shop page, and there are many types of pages, but they're all more or less using the same template. A page can have a template where the content is laid out based on that template, so you have to do a little bit of less work to make things happen. Templates can also change how the header looks, if there even is going to be one, the width of the page, footers, general style, and a lot of things. So I already showed you three very quick examples, but all using the same template. Which template? Well, they're all using the default template in Flatsum. There is not much that we can actually do with the shop page because it's created through WooCommerce, which, which more or less does its own things. But a page such as the home page and the About Us page, where I'll be doing a lot of the demo stuff for you here, is where you can really play with templates. And that's done by going to the edit page for that specific page you want to work with. In this case, here's the home page. And on the right hand side, and all those little fun things we have over there, there's an area that's called page attributes. That's where you can change the template. And as you can see, the home page is just using the default template, which well, doesn't do much really. It kind of just shows the content in the basic default way. Very briefly though, there are several types of templates to really pay attention to. One is the blank landing page, which is great for sales page type things. Now there's also for some of you who whether want to center the title or have no title, this is what you're going to want to use. And this a lot of time is what you're going to use, especially if you're not using the full width. Now the full width template means it's going to go to the full width of the browser. And I don't mean just the full width of the content like 960 pixels. I mean the absolute full width. So let's check out the home page after I change it to full width. And it got pretty messed up, right? Well, that's because this is the full width of the whole browser. That's what that means as opposed to the default template, which works more or less from this border here to this border here. That's more or less the content area. In full width, there's no such border and content can be from all the way to the left to all the way to the right. I recommend using this one sparingly or if you really have a design that will work with that. Because in some cases, if you forget to set this, it might end up looking weird like this. Other than the full width template like this, we also have a left sidebar one or a right sidebar. So it depends how you want to lay out your content. And by the way, in most cases, and if you're using the default template, it will handle that for you. But if you specifically want to set the right sidebar, which I recommend you do as opposed to the left one, use the right sidebar or the right sidebar no title. Other options though that you have are the page checkout and the page checkout focused. Especially if you're going to be doing sales pages where you want to direct the customer just to buy something, give them no frills, give them no other possibility of taking any action or leaving the page, you'll want to use this one, the page checkout focused, because all it will show them is the content and a little simple footer. That's it. For the full width, you also have a few fun little options. You have a transparent header, boxed header, blank header. You have a few fun things here to play around with. The transparent header, by the way, is going to make the whole header area. It's going to make that more or less not invisible, but transparent. So all this content is going to go behind it, which can cause trouble if you don't do this correctly. What could it be used for though? Well, it's going to be awesome if you're using it for a huge photo background or a video background where you want the menu and the header and all those fun things to be above that background image or that background video. For some, it works really, really well. And that would be a very, very modern thing to do. 
but pay attention to if that's good for your brand or not. If, for example, you're very content focused and you really want to keep putting out new articles, new pictures and things like that, that might not be the way to go. But, for example, maybe if you're an eco-friendly startup, a tech startup, or everything you're doing is really focused on the visuals, then maybe that's a good idea. For most of us, we don't want that. But I'm going to show you how it all works and show you how it all really breaks this stuff. Because you can see the full width already broke the home page. And it's going to break other pages as well. And I'm going to show you exactly how that's going to work so you can pick the best one that suits your needs. As promised, here we are on the About Us page and I'm going to show you each and every single one of those templates so you see how it affects the content. First up is, of course, the default template and its variations. In this default template, you, your content is more or less boxed in by these two invisible borders here and on the right side here. This length or width really changes on how wide your screen is and if it's wider than about 1,200 pixels, it's going to be this width and no longer. If your screen is smaller, for example, if you're going to a tablet, it will automatically resize to something smaller. But it will still be within these constraints. But we have this, the title. The default template has a title right here in the top left corner. And then your content down below. And that's it. Nothing special at all. But if you remember correctly, there are two other default templates. A center title, which puts the title in the center, like so. It also gives it this little line thing here. I don't know if you can see that. The title in the center with a line under it. And the other one is, which I use a lot on my pages, is the no title. Everything exactly the same, but no title. After the default template, I'm going to show you the full width. Full width, normal one, is plain and simple. The content goes left to right, nothing stopping it in between. So in this situation, it looks not that great. Um, if you're wondering, by the way, why this area and this area seem to still be nicely in the center, well, that's because this is a footer, and the footer isn't really touched by this template. So it's staying the same from page to page. The other full width templates are a blank header, which gives us no header at all, nada. So if you're looking for a very clean page with nothing on it except your content and a footer, this is what you want to go with. The other type is a boxed header. boxed header takes your header and more or less keeps it where it is but constrains the header instead of the content like in the default template both the header and the content are kind of more or less constrained to the center while the header kind of spreads out throughout the whole page to give you a nice long uh, smooth header right well here it's cut off right where the content is supposed to be and puts the content behind it so that's what you really get. This could be useful, again, if you have a graphic key background going around here or a video. That can work well. For me, I haven't found a need for that one as much. So, uh, you know, your mileage may vary. The parallax, if you don't know what parallax is, well, parallax is where your page moves, but a part of the page, usually an image, moves at a different speed. So it kind of looks 3D and with air quotes because it'll move up or down. Now here, obviously, we don't see much of anything happen. But did you notice what just happened with the About Us text? Hey, look at that. Here it is right in the middle, but now we're moving. It's not moving at the same pace as our content. That's parallax. If you set a featured image, it will be in this area over here, but I don't have one, so all it shows is a dark background and the text here. The full width transparent header, now that does something funny. So it still has that top bar right here, but everything else is transparent and you can't really see much of anything because if you remember our menu text is white, 
So it's kind of invisible. So in this case, this is a very bad idea to use, but it's still using the full width template content sizes. So everything goes from left to right and it's kind of made to float around the header, which you can barely see. Um, what uses you could use that for? Again, if you're using an image or you have a darker background and or if you're styling your stuff with the correct colors and spacings, might work. I personally haven't used it yet, but I will actually soon for a landing page. I want something there on a different website I'm working on. Now here, uh, again, all white stuff. I'm not happy with those two last options because for me, they don't give much value. For you, it, it might work. If you want a nice, clean a clean page, but still have the header there, you're going to have to change the colors there, of course, to actually see stuff. But again, all it is is the content at from left to right, and the header stuck right there in the middle, but really hard to see, especially if you're using a white background and your default color for text up there is white. Now there's the left sidebar. The left sidebar, as the name states, we're back, by the way, to the content nicely boxed in, is a sidebar on the left. In the default template, we don't have a sidebar. Here, we've set the sidebar to be to the left. Sidebars, by the way, are set under appearance and widgets. Well, let me rephrase. This is in the widgets area is where you set the widgets for a sidebar. That is not where you create, if you can, or arrange or play around with sidebars and how sidebars work. That's not it. That's just for adding or removing content from the sidebars. Now the sidebar no title, very similar kind of like the default no title. All it is is the sidebar with no title. Same things are going to happen for the right sidebar. And of course, the right sidebar, no title. Very similar, just flipped around. Now what we have left are these curious three and the featured items. I'll get to the featured items last. The My Account sidebar, Page Checkout, and Page Checkout Focused are rather unique, and I recommend you use them very sparingly. The My Account sidebar is where if somebody were to log in, and if instead of seeing this backend area here, they would see their own user panel, more or less. And that would happen if somebody's logged in as a regular user and you disable them to see this backend they will see their own about them page and with your content in here, if you have it, and their information around here. If I set this to the proper My Account page, it would kind of look better because it could have their content in here, their information, or any specific information I want only logged in people to see. Like I said, I don't use this one as much because especially if you're using a subscri subscription software or membership software, kind of takes care of that for you as well. So there isn't too much use for this one. But if you do use Flatsum with WooCommerce and the subscriptions plugin and add some membership functionality, this could be useful for you. Um, you are going to have to play around with that and see if this style works for you as opposed to just using the left sidebar, right sidebar, or just a default template. Like I said, personally, I haven't seen much of a use out of that. Page checkout, generally used for, well, when you're checking out already. Uh, it looks almost identical to the default page, no, no, no title, except as this up top. It's showing people where they are in the, uh, are in the checkout process. So more or less, if I were to click, click proceed to checkout, well, I'd see this up top and I'd, then I'd know, ah, yeah, I'm on the checkout process for sure. That's all that is. Page checkout focused, I personally like because Zam, almost nothing on here. It is super focused just to get somebody out the door. And this is very, very powerful, especially on landing pages, sales pages, information products. So be, be careful here. If you're selling products as an actual e-commerce site, as in uh, whether it's digital goods or physical goods, don't use this one. Make the just use the regular old checkout page because that blends very nicely into your brand and everything else you've done. This 
I would use only for very specific sales page checkouts and really big sales offerings, things like that, where you, all you want to focus somebody on and it's just sales, sales, sales. That's what I would use it for. Primarily information marketing, internet marketing sales. Now the last two are featured items, three columns and four columns. So these are gonna be, well, identical, except one is three columns and one is four columns. Now, what do I mean featured items? Well, first, obviously, we have our usual content in here. Again, footer stays the same. But if I had featured items, such as featured posts, featured pages, and other featured fun stuff, they could go in here if I said them to. Thus, I'd have to put them in the content. And again, we're using the full width layout. Featured four columns would be the exact same thing if I had featured items. In this current demo, I don't because there's not a need to as much. So I believe you don't really have to worry as much. But I will show you in just a second what it actually looks like when you have featured items. And that is more or less the whole shebang, how it all looks. Most of the time, you're going to use either a default template or and or one of these two or the full width or if you really like sidebars, probably the right sidebar or the right sidebar, no content. And especially if you're doing a content focused website, probably right sidebar, no title. So with that, let me show you the featured items three and four columns, and that'll be it for this. Now, a little bit ago, I said, you can have featured fun stuff in here, if and only if you set it to. The featured items for column and three column, you won't get much use out of them unless you put some content in here. So if I move the existing content down a little bit, in order to see the featured items three columns to work, I'm gonna have to go to the flatsome little button here, or if you have the page builder, use that. Then you go to the shop product sliders, and featured products. That's more or less the magic of the featured items, three columns and four columns. If you think I'm joking, I'm sadly not. That's about it. You can play around more with it. Um, there's not much to do with it. And ignore that image here. That's the big image by itself. But that's what you would get. Um, there's not much to the featured item stuff, except it being full width, which I don't see a point to for most things. Because again, if you're right, running an e-commerce shop, you probably want things constrained within your content. So you'll want to just use this featured products um, element from shop product sliders featured or one of these. You want to use that just on a regular old page with one of these other templates. So I guess, from my opinion, ignore featured items three and four column, use one of the other ones. And that concludes the Flatsome e-commerce tutorial about page templates and titles and stuff.